What's up, everybody? Sorry for the technical issues. We are recording this locally now, not a live stream today. Uh, Hornets and Hawks have already been talked about. Um, if you want that analysis, uh, there will be another video named exactly the same part one of this. Um, so go back there for that analysis. But now we're going to head back into Sixers and Knicks. Uh, we've given our take on Embiid. I don't know if that slipped through the cracks or not, but we are both big fans of his today. Would that be the right summary? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite plays on the slate. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we'll get past that. Ben Simmons, a guy coming up a lot for me, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. I don't feel super comfortable getting a ton of him, but it is the Knicks, and I'm not super worried about them doing anything defensively. They've been downright dreadful. So I don't mind going to Ben Simmons. I'm still a little dubious of how this team works now that Butler is there, but Simmons has been 40 plus fantasy points in uh, his last five games. I'm hoping that he can just have a little bit of a breakout coming up. Any yeah, additional I mean, Simmons think, thoughts? There you go. Yeah, I think that you'll just see the way I kind of see the hierarchy on this team is that like Embiid's going to get his kind of regardless. And then you're probably going to have games that kind of ebb and flow where Simmons is the guy that you want over Butler a lot of the time. Other games, you know, where where Butler is the guy. Um, but Simmons, his rates overall since the trade are perfectly fine. He has, you know, a 33% assist percentage, 21% usage rate. He did play 38 minutes last game, which was good to see since we had seen him down in like the 34-minute range in most games since the trade. So easier to confidently project him at, you know, around 36 minutes here. Same goes for Butler. So, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with Simmons. Um, looking at DraftKings pricing, he's – my third favorite guy on Philadelphia. I still have him behind Butler at a little bit cheaper price tag. I have him behind Embiid just because Embiid's, you know, absolute monster. But, you know, no issues at all in the spot for for Simmons. Do you want any Butler at 7800 on DK? Yeah. Um I don't know how much I would get. Like he doesn't he doesn't look like he's at a spot where I probably end up prioritizing him super heavily, but I do have him projected for, you know, over 40 fantasy points at his price tag, which is nice. He didn't really come up for me. He's not showing any real ownership. 4% on FanDuel, 6% on DK. So I'd be surprised if I got to him in one of my three main lineups. Um, the one guy I do want to touch on, he's very chalky on DraftKings right now. 28% expected ownership. What do you do with Wilson Chandler at 3,600? It's really frustrating. because, like, I wish his price point would just come up. Not saying that he necessarily deserves it, but... If he's going to play 35, 36 minutes a night, it's just so easy to pay off a $3,600 price tag. The flip side of that, though, is if he is going to be popular and, you know, you just said we have him projected for high ownership, he's the kind of guy that I just absolutely hate playing as a popular punt play. Not because I question how often he's going to give me, you know, six times his salary or whatever. It's that he just so infrequently is going to give me like 30 raw fantasy points. And at the end of the day, you need all of your lineup spots to contribute most nights. It's it's pretty rare when you can get by with a guy, you know, not really giving you a ton of points. And the frequency of that occurring or the, the likelihood of that occurring goes down a lot when it's a popular guy like we're projecting Chandler to be yeah. because then you're still competing with, you know, 28% of the field that has this dead spot in their lineups um, and, and have similar roster construction to you. So if he's popular, I'll take my chances and just hope that he doesn't shoot well or – pick up a bunch of steals but on a point per dollar basis i think he's a really good play yeah same here uh he's at 6.8x for me on dk uh, so i totally understand why he's at 28 percent ownership um he's 4500 on fanduel so it's still interesting but not nearly as interesting as i would like it to be um this one's basically just Embiid and simmons for me on fanduel i oddly didn't get a lot of Embiid to start which concerns me but I got so much Cantor and so much Brook Lopez that after my adjustments, uh, the Embiid ownership will flow in. Yeah. How much? Uh, how many DraftKings points do you have Embiid projected for? Fifty-seven point six. I'm a little high. What are you? Sixty-seven point six. Sixty-seven point two. That makes sense to me, though. What do you have Simmons at? Forty-five. Jesus. I have forty-nine. We're all over the place here on these Sixers. I have Butler at 42. 41. Go and beat, I guess. Yeah. 
you want to talk about the Knicks? Do you have anything else you want to touch on in Philly? I, there, it's not really that kind of game for me. Redick yeah. is probably the only other real option. Yeah, Redick's whatever. Knicks, 8K for Cantor, 6,800 on DK. I mean, this one feels like a pretty much a no-brainer on DraftKings in that he kind of just has to play a lot. I assume that Embiid puts Mitchell Robinson on the bench almost immediately if he comes in. Right. And because of the way that the rotations work, you're actually going to get, unless unless Fisdale adjusts for this to try and keep Robinson away from Embiid, which actually wouldn't make a lot of sense because Robinson's a better defender than Cantor. Yeah. He just fouls constantly. But like theoretically, you would like to have Robinson on the floor for Embiid minutes. Uh, but because of the way that these two teams run their rotations, you're actually going to get a nice chunk of minutes where Ennis Cantor is playing against Amir Johnson and then Embiid subs back in and plays against Mitchell Robinson. So that's good for Cantor just in that it you know lowers his foul risk a little bit because we know Embiid just fouls out every front court he faces. But um, yeah, so other things that, that make me like Cantor on top of the fact that you know he's played 40 and 36 minutes two games in a row, Mitchell Robinson again yesterday subbed in alongside Noah Von or sorry um, for Noah Vonley alongside Cantor and to me that just solidifies Cantor's minutes because if we know that Fisdale's goal is to get Robinson playing time and develop him the fact that he can play alongside Cantor and is playing alongside Cantor makes it so Cantor is not you know losing as many minutes obviously and it just solidifies his minutes floor um, you know not necessarily the case that they would do that today but just the fact that they've done it two games in a row makes me feel a little bit better about Cantor as well what do you have Cantor's minutes in for right now I'm probably gonna go 33 eh, I'm either 33 or 36 like 36 I feel like the problem is just it's gonna force Cantor into like every lineup I make yeah um, but I think that that's a perfectly fine minute projection at the same time you know 36 yesterday 40 the game before that uh so, I have him in for 33 if it helps, and he's already being forced into everything for me on FanDuel, <laughs> where he's 8,000. So Right. Yeah, I mean, if I using baselines, if I give him 33 minutes on DraftKings, I get like 40 points, which is good, and will get him in a lot, but probably won't put him in everything. Okay. And if I give him 36 minutes, then I get up to 43, and he just ends up being like one of my best values. Yeah, he, he looks great. Um, I'll have him on FanDuel for sure. I, I can't imagine not going to him just because the, on, the only downside really for Cantor here is that he's also in foul trouble. Right. I mean, he's such a great per minute guy that uh, if he's going to be soaking up extra minutes, his salary is going to go a lot higher than just 8K on FanDuel. There's also a chance, I think, that Vonley defends Embiid as much as possible. Good luck. Well, I only say that because they have been using Vonley against centers, and he's out there with Cantor uh, a decent amount. So that would just, I mean, obviously make me like Cantor even more yeah. if he's. Yeah, every just, single yeah. possession that Enos Cantor isn't guarding Joel Embiid is good for your ownership of Cantor. Right. Uh, let's talk about the rest of these just lovely Knicks. I think that. Uh... Have we gotten another ownership update? Let me take a look at this quick. Because um, it seems like Tom might have just been, or Tom and Alex might have just been like, oh, fuck this team. No ownership to Burke, no ownership to Moody A. <laughs> just, don't, just don't do it. 23% to Alonzo Trier, though. 3,700 on Fandle, which I'm all for it. Although we had this conversation, what, 15 minutes ago that you should just play the guys that aren't owned. So. Yeah. Um, so looking through New York's rotation from yesterday, Trier obviously was the hot hand. He closed that game out. But you do want to notice that he picked up five minutes and 46 seconds at the end of the second quarter when Noah Vonley picked up his third foul. Yeah, third foul. Um, Trier subbed in for Vonley. So you can shave those you know six minutes off if you're just trying to project minutes. And that gets you down to the 24 from Trier that I think is a very reasonable projection. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, Damian Dotson also came back into the rotation yesterday. That's a problem. He played 20, he played the final 23 minutes of the game. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I can't believe they dusted him off. Yeah, mostly over his own. Yeah. So I don't know that that ends up mattering today, but 
just keep in mind that this guy's also still breathing and it's just another like wing guard type body that they can use. When I looked at it, I was like, God damn, as if this wasn't more like difficult enough. Now we're throwing more dudes back into the cauldron. Yeah, I was I was like half sweating the game last night because I had Burke in most of my lineups and I just pull it up. I'm like, oh, Burke's not on the floor. Who do they have in? Oh, Dotson's alive. Great. Like I literally forgot he was on the team. Uh, so Burke and Moody, a, this has been like the question for, I don't know, a week or two now. Burke's 6,100 on FanDuel. Moody is 5,700 on FanDuel. It makes, that makes it a lot easier. You can just simply avoid both of them. But $4,900 and $4,700 on DraftKings is real because I would expect one of them to be a valid play today. Do you have a preference between the two? I mean, I assume your preference is Burke if they're both at no ownership, but do you even want to go there? I mean, preference is definitely Burke. Kind of want to go there. Like 4,900 is just still so cheap for the upside that he brings. And at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for in tournaments is upside and preferably on guys that are not popular. And I wouldn't expect Burke to be popular today after, you know, letting down 30% of the field last night with seven fantasy points. Um, so it's like the perfect spot to go to Burke. We have seen this Philadelphia team get beat pretty badly by guys like Burke as well multiple times this season by just like ball dominant guards that shoot and i mean that that's burke um so i think it's actually a really nice spot for him as well um i I, i'll probably end up going back to burke and just hitting the bar before that game tips off (laughs) (laughs) there you go Uh, yeah the only i love can't what do you want to do with tim hardaway 7k on fanduel 6600 on dk i had a lot of them yesterday i'll have at least one lineup i would imagine with him today and i hate myself for it yeah, I think he's fine. Um, the pro- I just hate rostering guys like that when they're popular, and I don't. Ha- I'm not looking at the ownership projections, but I'm assuming he will be, just because he's the kind of guy that when his price tag drops to where it's at now, he becomes popular. Um, the minutes are secure, which is nice because he's like one of the only guys on this team that you can say that about. A question for you, just to pause here: Why are his minutes secure? Are you like are you asking why I say that or why he's the only guy that doesn't have his minutes messed with? The 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 latter. Not you not like I understand why like that his minutes are secure. Okay, why yeah. is he like the one guy on the Knicks that like they're cool with? Because he's <laughs> terrible. Know. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Oh, okay. Sorry. I it's just I think about it sometimes. It's like he should be playing like twenty two minutes a game for this team. <laughs> like for a team that just rides the hot hand every game, how is Tim Hardaway like the the guy who is either one for 17 or like 10 of 12 every single game. Like how it's is way more one for 17 than 10 of 12. Like right. if yeah, they're riding how... the hot hand, it's rarely his. <laughs> right. Like how is he the one that's just immune to this? Is it because his last name's Hardaway? It, I'm not yeah. even trying to be funny. Like, is it honestly just because he has like a lineage in the NBA? I mean, they probably, yeah, it, it's, he's one of their more talented guys, obviously, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's weird that he's never gone through. He hasn't had like any stretch this season. I don't think at least that I can remember where he's been the one that's kind of been kicked out. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I mean, I guess you, does it make it better or worse that they just like are showcasing him to trade him? Because to me, it's worse. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't have anything else for the Knicks. Um, Noah, hang on. Yeah, Noah Vonley. Yeah, he's fine. Don't don't read into his minutes from last night. He lost, you know, I already mentioned the five minutes and 46 seconds he lost at the end of the second quarter to his third foul. He then proceeded to pick up his fourth foul 51 seconds into the third quarter, sat that entire rest of the quarter. So he lost, you know, a lot of minutes there. He's going to be needed defensively in this game. There's no, like, he, he clearly can get in foul trouble again. But, you know, you're talking about a guy who was like 9% owned yesterday. It's, it's the same argument as for Burke. You know, he's the kind of guy that I would like to roster when he's low-owned because he clearly has monster upside. It's just that he's going to be volatile, but he should have every opportunity in this game to play well as long as he doesn't fail. Yeah. His price is just climbing too much. Now he's 6,700 on FanDuel. Yeah, he's still 57 on DraftKings. I like him, but it's a tough sell. Ugh, now we're getting into a little bit of a slog. The Brooklyn Nets hosting the Utah Jazz. Nets 107 implied total. Jazz 110 three-point favorites in Brooklyn. Donovan Mitchell expected to be back today. Um, he is in for me, at least. I assume he's in for you. 
Yeah, and that's good because that rotation that Utah had been running without him just made absolutely zero sense. I guess we'll start with the Brooklyn side. Um, I don't have a lot that I like here. This is a not great matchup from a fantasy perspective, unless you're the Pacers, I guess. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, 7,700 on FanDuel. I'm good. The only guy I got more than 10% in my original crunch was Alan Crabb at 4,100, which is never exciting. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything here that I would recommend on either site with any sort of confidence. No. I mean, Russell obviously has upside. Like, he got 34 minutes last game. It seems like he plays around 34 minutes when he's playing well. But um, it's it's not a spot that you're going to be super confident in. It's obviously not an appealing game from a pace standpoint. Dinwiddie's price is coming up a little bit. There's yeah, there, there's nothing here that grades out as as great for me. Russell's um, the best guy, but I still think there's probably going to be guys that I like more. Yeah, same page. Um, do you want to touch on seriously anybody? Uh, Hollis Jefferson's got 13% expected ownership on DraftKings, 19% on FanDuel. So I feel like we should touch on him since he's at least being looked at, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he started last game, played about 30 minutes, finally. I don't really know what took the Knicks or the Nets so long. He projects as a good play for me, not great. Like, I have him right now at about 30 fantasy points on DraftKings. At 5,200, that's obviously perfectly fine, but chances are that as the day goes along on a 10-game slate, I just end up with guys that are better. Yeah. I agree. Jared Allen too. I mean, 35 minutes last game was really nice to see. And he's reasonably priced. And it's actually a matchup that um has been very good for opposing centers this season surprisingly. So I think that actually I think it back Allen would be my favorite guy from this team. Now that I've adjusted his minutes to where I think they can get to. I'm at 29. What do you have Mary right now? If I'm at 32, I have him as my favorite guy on this team. He would be a very tasty play at 32. But also not the type of thing that I want to just get him to 32 and be like, oh, I really like Jared Allen today in you know the slowest game on the slate. Right. Even, even if Jazz. I put him at 30. If I put him at 30 minutes, which has been my baseline projection for Allen all season, then he comes in basically as like the same play as D'Angelo Russell in terms of point per dollar. Okay. Like, I, I get him to, like, 33 DraftKings points in 30 minutes. Okay. Um. So, Utah. 150 lineups crunch to start the day. I didn't get anyone in a single crunch. Not a single lineup. Nope. You seg. I mean, I, I sure as hell didn't, but normally you do. Yeah. Uh. No one has more than 4% expected ownership on FanDuel. No one has more than nine on DK, and that's only because Derek Favors is massively underpriced in comparison to his salary, and he's only at nine percent. So, I would, if I were recommending anything on Utah, I would just be lying. They're not coming up for me. They're not going to come up for me unless we get some sort of really weird injury news. I have no interest in this game whatsoever. Gobert is the only one popping up for me, and at a deep center position, I can't say that he's someone I prioritize, but he's the only guy from the team popping up. It is a really poor rebounding Brooklyn team. It's a spot where he should do well. Um, but, you know, and, and 7,700 on DraftKings is very reasonable. Yeah. But it's just still a deep position. We already talked about Embiid, who I expect to take one of my center spots. So tough to say that I would have like a ton of Gobert. All right, talking to our premium. All right, moving on. Uh, have we cut out at all on a period for you? It got choppy once or twice, but didn't completely cut out. Okay. That, see, like, ultimately, that won't matter. It'll just record through it, and we'll never skip a beat. But it's good to know. It makes me more curious that it's my computer and not uh, any sort of service. That also makes me kind of nervous, so I might have to do some uh, computer cleaning today before I black out getting drunk for that Liverpool game. <laughs> And then doing, uh, I'm supposed to be doing the damn DraftKings show today, but they haven't emailed me yet. Oops. Definitely black out before you do that. I wore my Kelly Kapowski shirt on it last week. I was 
or two weeks ago, I was hoping that someone would say something while I was on the show and I would just go on this like really ridiculous rant. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't even acknowledge it. I kept moving my microphone and stuff so that like her face was clearly <laughs> above my, ch- oh, it was perfect. Nobody said a word. The host didn't say anything. They were just like, we're, I'm not giving this guy the platform. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to find something really stupid to wear. Well, do you, I assume you don't watch any of the housewives. That would be a good assumption. Okay, yeah, it's I get roped into that shit because of the wife. Um, but do you know anything about those shows? No, no. Uh, I know there's one in like Atlanta. Okay, so that is true. Uh, so the the Jersey Housewives had a couple on it that were in some like tax evasion y fraud type scheme, and they both got busted. They allowed them to split their prison time so that they weren't going at the same time because they have a bunch of kids, which I thought was a really nice gesture. Um, so the wife went in first, and she's not the brightest bulb. I, I have very little doubt that she had no part in any of this. Like, she could not be the mastermind of any of it. <laughs> I don't really think that he could either, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so my wife and I both bought uh, Free Teresa shirts, and it's just like a big picture of her head that says Free Teresa. So maybe <laughs> I'll wear that one today. Spoiler Wait. alert to everybody watching DraftKings tonight. Um, anyway, let's move on to Houston and Dallas. God, what a tangent. Even when Chad's not here, I'm still a moron. <laughs> we, we don't have Chad here to tell you to shut up and get back on track. Right, exactly. I, it's on you now, man. Yeah. Talking about housewives for no reason whatsoever on a day where we had 20 minutes of technical issues. <laughs> on a 10-game on a Wednesday slate. I Hopefully have, have this done before lock. I should not be in charge of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> This whole show is brought to you by Thrive, everybody. Houston and Dallas, 112 implied total for the Rockets, 105.5 for the Mavs. Bit of a pace down game for Dallas, but we'll start on the Houston side. I have Chris Paul in. Do you? I do not at the moment. Okay. That's obviously going to skew the way that we speak about this game. So... I'm going to just go off of why I put him in. Um, The note on Roto World uh, was a quote from D'Antoni that said, D'Antoni did say that Paul was feeling better on Tuesday and that he's real close, but he stressed that he will not rush his return and he remains questionable on Wednesday. Um, If he's really close, I feel like he plays then. That was the quote heading into Monday, I guess. Yeah, probably. And look, I, I, if he's not I playing, just play more Eric Gordon and Ennis and Gary Clark. Right. And, and James Harden. Right. And Clint Capella. Yeah. Anyway, what do you want to do with Harden if he plays? He's 11-6 on both sides. It gets pretty tough there. I'm, I'm still not opposed to it in tournaments. You know, obviously, he still has a monster ceiling. And even before Paul went out with this injury, we had seen Harden being much better and and more aggressive offensively. He was averaging about a 40% usage rate in the games since Carmelo Anthony left the team, even when Chris Paul was healthy. So I, I still think that he's a good play. It's just not – like you have Anthony Davis, who obviously we'll get to later. He's $200 less expensive on DraftKings. So – Right there, that that just makes it so. Unless we're talking about you know tournament ownership, and it's a little early in the day for me to want to actually you know have an entire take based on that, um, then it's just from an optimal standpoint, it's it's basically impossible for me to pay more money for James Harden than for Anthony Davis in their respective spots if Chris Paul's in. Uh, you mentioned his usage. I have Harden at thirty nine percent usage if Paul is in. Yeah, that's about where I would have that's it. That's fucking nuts. Which I think is over projecting him from a median standpoint, but I have no issue doing that, especially with superstars. Yeah. Because, like, with, I'm, not, with their, I'm not trying to get Harden's median projection tonight. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what happens if you do that with guys at their price tags is you just don't get superstars in your lineups? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, do you want Capella? 9,200 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. He's so damn good. He really is. Uh, not the greatest matchup like with deandre but if i get him i get him the the problem for me is just you know Embiid. we already talked about Embiid's another guy that i have projected really close to harden uh for for a little bit less money but so you have Embiid at the top of the center position obviously a ton of upside it's just such a deep deep position that 
paying for Capella at the top of his price range gets a little bit tough. Like he still grades out as a good play, just not you know as great. I do think that he's a little bit better if Paul's out. Okay. Yeah, I would agree there as well. Uh, would you want to play Paul if he's in seventy nine hundred on DK? Not particularly. Okay. I don't think he's a bad play. Like I, th- I think he has a floor there. Um, I just question his upside whenever James Harden's healthy. I get it. I saw a stat yesterday. Well, not a stat. But people have been wringing their hands about like the demise of the Rockets. Uh, when Harden and Paul both start, they're eight and four. Like, wasn't that the same thing last year? Like they lost like one game with them healthy for like a really long time. Yeah, every game that Harden, Paul, and Capella for most of the season, I don't know how it finished out. It couldn't have been a lot, but for most of the season, when Harden, Capella, and Paul played together, they were like thirty and one. Yeah. So. I think the demise of the Rockets is a little weird. They're definitely worse defensively, but you know when they're healthy, they're still putting on a very, very difficult team to beat. And they've been picking it up defensively as well. Yeah, they, they're twenty second in effective field goal percentage now. Um, they just haven't been. They've been really, really bad on the boards, and they've been putting people on the line a lot. Yeah. And that's just like if you're not getting a rebound and you're fouling, like you're just you're giving away too many free points. Right. I, I, but I feel like the whole demise thing at this point is just like kind of narrative based because yeah. they started out the season so poorly in terms of defense, in terms of playing, in terms of everything. And then they got better, but then Paul got hurt. So they haven't been winning. And it's just like people are just kind of running it all together. Like it's the same situation. Agreed. Is there any, if we're assuming Paul is in, do you want any of the rest of the role players for Houston? PJ Tucker's popping up a little bit for me on FanDuel at 4,300. No. Go to Dallas, where half the team is questionable. I uh, just want to make sure I get the right list of everybody. Dennis Smith Jr., questionable. Luka Doncic, questionable. Did not practice yesterday. And Dwight Powell, questionable. So everything that we say here is going to be questionable. You said Doncic didn't practice yesterday? Did not practice yesterday. I just always, whenever he's questionable, I just mentally rule him in because I think he's been questionable for like 40 games already this season. Yeah. Uh, now... Granted, he's questionable with an illness, so uh, like he really could just not play today. Uh, yeah. There's no way to know this stuff. I don't get the like we should know long before game time. I don't think he's gonna go out there and like get ready if he feels like shit. He's either right. just gonna not play or play. Um, with that said, I got absolutely no Dallas in my entire crunch, and the highest. Exposed guy to the public on either site is Wes Matthews at four percent. So, do you want any part of Dallas? Keep it moving. You said keep it. If moving. Dennis Smith's out, yeah, I said keep it moving. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, if Smith's out, then Berea becomes appealing. Yeah, agreed. And then I would say that if Smith is out, Brunson is appealing as a Fanduel punt. Sure. I mean, he, he the thing he only played eight minutes last game with Smith out. Oh, really? Yeah. They they started Luca, Matthews, Finney Smith, Barnes, and Jordan. Berea played twenty six minutes. Brunson played eight. Wow. Harris played seventeen. Yeah. If if Luca and Smith are out, then yeah. Yeah. That, that, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I would just assume that Brunson would have got like twenty minutes in yeah. that miss, and I assume that Brunson is priced at nothing on Fanduel. So yeah. The caveat to that is I'm looking at Popcorn Machine and completely trusting them. Um, they you're, have... right, uh, you're right about the minutes. I have Brunson okay. at nine minutes here. Okay, yeah. So they've had some issues this year that have made me look dumb on shows. So I'm throwing that caveat in. Uh, it's not just Popcorn Machine that makes you look dumb on shows. I, I don't need any help. I know. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Milwaukee and Chicago. This one's going to be fun. Bucks, 121 implied total. Uh, third highest on the slate. Bulls 107. 14 point favorites for the Bucks in Milwaukee. Jabari Parker revenge narrative coming. We'll get there. We'll start with the Bucks. 12 1 for Giannis on FanDuel. 12,000 on DraftKings. I mean, look, he's not going to find a better spot than this. Um, there's not a single soul on Chicago that can slow Giannis down in any way, shape, or form but he's so damn expensive and he's been underperforming constantly underperforming what you're looking for constantly. Bucks are clearly good. Um, what do you do here with Giannis? How do you manage someone at 12 K on DraftKings? 
he is nowhere close to any sort of optimal lineup that I make on this particular slate. The argument for Giannis would be this is a very appealing game to not not full game stack on a 10 game slate, but to have like many game stacks, I think, because both of these teams, you know, where a huge percentage of the production is coming from. Yeah. And it's a very good matchup for Milwaukee. It's a huge pace up spot for Chicago. So I like the idea of having some lineups where, you know, you have Giannis with Levine and Parker or something like that. Um, because I just think it's a game that, you know, if it stays competitive, it could just absolutely shoot out. Um, but outside of that, it's just tough to get to Giannis. I mean, you, even as there are enough superstars on the slate that even if you tell me Giannis is going to be like five or 7% owned, there are enough other guys with, you know, MB than with Harden and with Davis, you know, that it, that, that seems right. It doesn't seem like, Oh man, I can't believe I'm getting, you know, 7% owned Giannis. Yeah. And with him as expensive as he is, the game has to stay close. doesn't have to, the game need probably needs to stay close. Like we've seen him get 70 points in three quarters, but um, more likely than not, the game needs to stay close so he gets his, you know, 36 to 38 minutes. And if that's the case, it forces you kind of onto a mini game stack. So um, I, I like mini game stacking. I think if I'm playing three max, maybe like forcing one mini game stack here with Giannis makes sense. But as like a standalone play, it's just really tough for me to get there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I wouldn't begrudge anyone for doing it, but it's a really tough sell. I don't know. He's Giannis, and Chicago's bad on D. I will likely not have him. I'm playing three max today. I would be very surprised if I had him in one of my lineups. But if he the popped other, up, I'd be cool with it. <laughs> the one, the other like counter argument to Giannis is that obviously you would like to get production from Milwaukee, but you have Giannis who's priced at 12k. You have Middleton and Bledsoe and Lopez. You know and I guess if you want to throw in Brogdon, sure. But Middleton, Bledsoe, Bledsoe, and Lopez all kind of underpriced for their ceilings and even for their like medium projections. So is it more efficient to like pay up for Giannis and hope that a bunch of stuff breaks your way and he's the highest scorer on the slate and everything else works out? Or to just get your pieces of the box by taking the cheaper guys where it's harder for them to fail and they still have monster upside? Yeah, and these guys are so much better priced on FanDuel. Uh, Middleton is $100 cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK. Bledsoe is uh, f only $500 more expensive, so his isn't as great. Uh, Brolo, $5,200. Malcolm Brogdon is the same price on both sites. Would you have any interest in Brogdon at $5,600 on FanDuel? Shooting guard, right? I don't know. Um, <laughs> what getting, you I'm getting there. I have no nah. idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, shooting yeah. guard. It's underpriced. It's just I hate Malcolm Brogdon as a DFS play. Very, very fair uh, sentiment to have. Anybody else from Milwaukee? God, they ran a really tight rotation against Charlotte. Yeah, Ilya Silva got the straight DMP. Yeah, I was going to ask because I thought that he was back from his illness or whatever. He was available to play. Okay. Um. Yeah, man, those minutes they played against Charlotte are really, really appealing. I'll tell you what, it, they, it, this probably wouldn't shake out the way, like, they just wouldn't end up doing this deal. But if Ilyasova is going to get a couple DNPs, I feel like the Sixers are going to come knocking at the door like, uh, can we get Ursan back, please? Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to use him. Like, would you like a top 55 protected second rounder and get would that money like, off your books? Or would you like last year's first round pick? I'm not sure which one they prefer, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interested in Markel Fultz. <laughs> no, we'll take the, the 55th overall pick, please. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go to Chicago now? Yeah. Um, just, I, yeah, load up on Bucks, load up on Hornets. Like, it's it's kind of similar for both teams. That's a, yeah, very good point. Whew, Chicago, 8,700 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK for Zach Levine. You got to love Levine if you think that Milwaukee doesn't blow them out. Yep. Like, it's, if you think this game could stay even remotely close and Levine can get his allotment of minutes, you have to love Levine here. Yeah, I mean, it's th this game in general outside of... So, like, I think that guys like Bledsoe, Middleton, Lopez, you can play, you know, standalone plays. Their price tags are fine. Yeah. But I obviously talked about it for Giannis already, but I feel the same way about Levine. He's expensive enough. If he hits his ceiling and gives you what you're really hoping for when you roster him in tournaments... Milwaukee probably is not running away with this game, and you probably want either Giannis or like a couple of 
the other Milwaukee guys. I completely agree with you. Um, no real ownership here. Uh, Wendell Carter at 11% on DK is the highest guy on DraftKings, still at 5K. Minutes coming down, more minutes going to Robin Lopez. I don't understand why. <laughs> they tried sitting Robin Lopez the middle of last year. They got yelled at for it. They barely brought him back for it. Uh, they're dreadful again this year, and now Robin Lopez is back. <laughs> Carter's also fouling like crazy. I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just don't... You can't read into his minutes on a game-to-game -game basis. Like, he played 24 last game. He lost three minutes at the end of the second quarter to a foul. He picked up his third and fourth foul in the first three minutes of the third quarter. Lost the rest of that quarter. I, I still think that he should be projected for, like, 30 to 32 minutes. Wow, okay. So we're on very different pages here. I have him in for 26 right now. I mean, I think that's like a me I think that's a good median projection for him because we at this point so he, he's losing minutes to fouls, he's losing minutes to blowouts. The Bulls suck and he fouls a lot. So both of those things happen very frequently. So 26, I think, is like the the correct projection. The thing, the reason I like using 30 or 32 for tournaments is because if things go right and this game doesn't blow out and he doesn't foul, I think the plan is for him to play 30 or 32. It's just that that's been happening very, very infrequently lately. I'm going to sneeze at some point in time, so I want to make sure I'm muting. <laughs> oh, I thought I had a little bit more time than I did. Um, so I have Carter at 26 minutes. Like I said, I got 30% of him on FanDuel. And I can't imagine how much I would get on DK if I ran it, but it would be a comparable amount. So if I put him at 30 minutes, he I'd get him in 100% of my shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was, I was going to say you don't even need to get him that high. Um, I was just adjusting his minutes for DraftKings. And if I put him at 32, he just like ends up being one of my best plays. If I put him at 30, he still ends up being a great play. Uh, yeah. Oh, and he's power forward eligible in DraftKings now, which means that I can almost guarantee I have Wendell Carter. There you go. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of Justin Holiday at 5,400? on DraftKings. That that shit needs to stop. Um because <laughs> <laughs> like I at, at this point I'm just gonna have no parts of it and it hopefully ends soon. I agree. So it's just so many minutes like right and, and that's the appeal but the price tag has just come up so much now. Chandler Hutchison's back which means uh less rebounding opportunities for holiday. I assume that's why his rebounding had gone up those couple of games was just because he was getting more time um, you know, basically he was Jabari Parker's backup. Yeah. Uh, so last game though, you know, everyone still rostered him or not everyone, but he was like 20% on last game and he, you know, played a boatload of minutes, but that's not new. Like Justin holiday has been playing huge minutes all season long sure. and he's not very productive. Nope. Last game. I think he made five, three pointers. Um, so good luck with that. Right. It's it. And it's not, it's not that it's a bad spot here. Like Milwaukee will give it up to guys that can shoot. It's an up-tempo game. He's going to play huge minutes. It's just that Holiday, realistically, when you project him out, even in you know his 36 to 38 minutes, he's a guy that should probably be like $4,800 to $5,000. Yeah. And now, because he had two of the best rebounding games of his career, followed by a game that he made five three-pointers, he's up to like 5500 I didn't get him at all on FanDuel because he's 6500 <laughs> He's five hundred dollars more expensive than Wendell Carter, and so just like I guess to to reiterate the point, like last game he obviously put up a really good game, but and he played thirty seven minutes. That's not out. Of, that's not unusual. Yeah. He had a thirteen and a half percent usage rate. He Fantastic. shot five of eight from three. Like congratulations. He grabbed six rebounds, which is less than the eleven and the thirteen he grabbed in the games before. It's still relatively high for him but it's at least like normal, you know, had four assists. But the point being, it's not like he went out there and like he got 10 shots, eight of them were from three, five of them went in. In in the last, during this hot streak, he's made five, four, five, three, three, and six three-pointers. <laughs> That's it, the new league, man. Right. And it's, but it's not to say that like that can't happen again, but do you really want to pay the price tag that is a result of Justin Holiday shooting lights out from three for a week. Nope, I don't. Not even that he's, I don't know if lights out is even the right word. One of those games he shot four for 13 from three. Lights out for him. Yeah. 
Um, but I mean, five for 10, five for eight, six for nine, three for six. It, yeah, I mean. We've probably done too much Justin Holiday at this point. Yeah, I had a lot of like pent up Justin Holiday. Uh, it seems it. I feel like you need like Justin Holiday therapy. Yeah. What do you want to do with Archie? <laughs> Not play him. Mm-hmm. I got 50% of him on FanDuel. He plays big minutes and he's cheap. Yeah, 4,200 on FanDuel is getting to a point where I'm not really stoked about it, but good lord. Yeah, if I project him for 36 minutes on DraftKings, which I think is reasonable, he comes out as like a perfectly mediocre play. Okay. Now we got to talk about the piece de resistance in this game. Jabari Parker. He's going, going back, back to Milwaukee. 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. 0% expected ownership on FanDuel, 1% on DraftKings. Narrative Street will bring that one up. Do you care at all? About the narrative? No. Oh, well, that I know. Do you yeah. care at all about Jabari Parker? <laughs> yeah, he's just, he, like, he's been projecting well for me for a while now, and he's actually been coming through lately, which has been really nice. Um, not grading out, like, I, I don't like him as much on this slate as I have on other slates recently, yeah. but since they made the starting lineup change and you started getting um, Archie Diacono in there with Parker and with Levine, you know, he, his usage hasn't suffered at all. He's up still around like 25, 26%, but also the assists and the rebounding have been there in addition to, you know, still playing like 36 minutes last game, even with Chandler Hutchison back. So just, you know, really appealing from that standpoint. And it makes him great out as, you know, a, a good play for me here. Um, still more appealing if I'm running it back with box. Agreed. Yeah, he, he didn't jump out for me. Uh, 7,400 on FanDuel is kind of a tough sell. Yeah, he, he's been averaging. So they, they made the lineup change on November 7th. And Parker's played 10 games since then, averaging 1.02 DraftKings points per minute, which is essentially the same per minute production as Levine. Now, Levine gets a higher ceiling because he gets more shots up and eventually they'll go in or sometimes they'll go in. But the rates for Parker still, you know, 25.7 usage, 15% assist percentage, 13% rebounding percentage. For context, that gives him the highest assist percentage on the team behind Levine and Shaq Harrison. It gives him the highest rebounding percentage other than, no, it gives him the highest rebounding percentage. Sorry, second highest rebounding percentage other than Wendell Carter. So he's just very involved in the peripheral aspects as well. Okay. Good luck with Jabari tonight, everybody. Want to move on? Yep. Minnesota Timberwolves hosting the San Antonio Spurs. Wolves 110.75 implied total. Spurs 106 and a quarter. So four and a half point favorites for the Wolves. Uh, not an appealing fantasy game. Not a lot of interest for me. I barely got any Spurs. Towns at 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK would probably be the spot I would want to look at the most in this game. Otherwise, I'm kind of good on Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, Teague Towns. for 6,100 is interesting on DraftKings. Yeah, it's okay. Um, nobody grades out great for me. Like Towns is the only guy that grades out. Towns grades out really well, but then when you compare him to other centers, it ends up being kind of like mediocre. Right. Like I have Towns projected for 53 DraftKings. Uh, I need to bump his minutes a bit. I'm projected for 55 DraftKings points, which obviously is really good. But when you put it in context of my projections and you remember that I have Joel Embiid at 67 and, you know, I have other guys really high, it means that I probably don't get Towns in like optimal lineups. Yeah. I, I don't have any interest in Covington or Rose or Wiggins or Sard. I'm just I'm good on Minnesota. Yeah, it's just Towns for me, and Ta more more so Towns on DraftKings. Yep, I agree. Spurs, uh, we don't have anybody higher than eight percent ownership. That's Forbes on Fanduel. Nobody's interested in DeRozan. No one interested in Aldridge. No one in Gay. I don't have any interest in any of these guys. They're not popping up for me. You want any Spurs? The only thing that I would point out that is interesting is it's just a dream matchup for Aldridge. Yeah. He crushes this matchup basically every time that he plays it, and there's good reason for it, and it's because of the defensive schemes that Minnesota runs under Thibodeau. They're most vulnerable to stretch bigs, and Aldridge clearly is that. You're going to get you know whoever's 
defending him, closing out late on him and, and just getting open looks. The price tags come up. The minutes actually last game were down a little bit. They, they've been down two games in a row, but one of those games, you know, we talked about it was just the hockey line change, so I don't care. But last game, his minutes were down a little bit. All the starters' minutes were down a little bit, so that's concerning. But as a tournament play, if you're going to get him in no ownership, I would just like to be kind of ahead of the field because I think it's such a good matchup for him. That's fair. I got 3% on my first crunch. He's at 5 in projected ownership, so it's, it's not going to take a lot. Yeah. It's just not a great fantasy game. Yeah, and, and I mean, not obviously, game logs don't aren't that is you know versus team game logs aren't really that useful. But just to point it out with Aldridge because there is a specific reason for liking him. Um, fifty six fantasy points against Minnesota this season. Faced them three times last season: fifty nine and a half, thirty two, forty eight. Four times the season before that: forty three, forty, forty two, and thirteen. So I mean, he's pretty consistently just exploited a matchup that he should exploit. This one we're going to have to talk about. It's your team. The New Orleans Pelicans hosting the Washington Wizards. Highest total on the board. 123 and a quarter for the Pelicans is number one on the entire slate. 117.25 for the Wizards. Also quite high. Uh, Nice, fast game. Very little defense to be found, at least specifically from the Washington side. We'll start with Anthony Davis, 12500 on FanDuel, 11400 on DraftKings. I mean, if I'm going to pay heavy, heavy freight, uh, I would rather pay it for Anthony, my, you know, ignoring injuries, I would rather pay it for Anthony Davis than Giannis in this spot. I assume this game has a better chance to stay close. What do you want to do with AD? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just such a phenomenal spot. Both of these teams are in the top five or six in pace. They're both in the bottom five in defensive rating this year. Um, Washington is the second worst rebounding team in the NBA. Dwight Howard's already been ruled out, so they're not getting any help there. There's there's nothing to dislike about Anthony Davis here. Yeah, no. uh, yeah, absolutely my favorite. It, ignoring ownership, like obviously there's enough really good expensive plays on this slate that if he were like disproportionately highly owned, then it would be different. But um, yeah, just my favorite guy from that that top range. 18% right now, I would be very nervous to be like aggressively under that number. Yeah, I agree. You know, if you get to 15 or something, I'm not going to quibble over a couple percentage points. But if you're like, I don't see it for AD today, you should go and get new glasses. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a dream spot. There is not a soul on Washington that can can hang with him. I mean, Marquise yeah. Morris is like the little version of that. Jeff Green is like the little version of that, but it's not. This is not optimal for those guys. What do you want to do with the rest of the Pels? Whether it's Holiday, Miritich, Randall, Eton Moore. Um, Miritich getting a lot of love. Twenty percent expected ownership on Fanduel. Uh, Twenty nine on DK, where he's only sixty nine hundred. He's grading out as what looks to be the best option of everyone else. Um, I assume that you would rather have Drew, but Miritich looks good. Yeah, it depends what, like how many minutes Miritich gets. Normally, we're getting 32 minutes from him. Against Boston, he played 37. Yeah, I have him in for 33 so, right now. Right. Yeah, I'm going to project him for 32, I think. And that makes him a good play. Um, it, make, it puts him behind, in, in terms of value from this team, puts him well, obviously, behind Anthony Davis, puts him a little bit behind. I love Drew like I always do. You know, still a really good matchup for him. Price tag still very affordable. Going to play huge minutes. Gets a ton of usage, ton of assists, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, really like him a lot. No problem with with Miritich if he ends up in my lineup, though. What do you think of Miritich as a cash play on DK? I, I mean, can't imagine he's optimal. Okay. But, I mean, I obviously haven't tried to build a cash lineup. 29% expected ownership. Um I was just kind of pointing it out to wrap back to that question we got originally on cash to GPP ownership. Yeah. Um, that $6,900 price point is really nice. Like he's coming out as a, a really good point per dollar guy for me. Yeah. I mean, I have him. The thing with him is that his he, he's been difficult to project because his usage at the beginning of the season was super high and it was higher than we expected it to be. And now it's come down to a range in the mid teens that, that we expected based off what we saw last year. So if your baseline's pulling like an average from, you know, like this season or something, it's probably 
not not saying you in particular, just um, like in general. No, I figured you were talking to me directly. Yeah, uh, your projections suck. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I mean, like, he probably should be, unless you're just trying to get Miritich, like he probably should have like an 18-ish percent usage rate, not like a 20-something. If you go back and look, he's had, he's had over a 20% usage rate in one of his last like nine games. And that game was against the Knicks. I think Davis was hurt that game or something. I think that was like he had an in-game injury. He's at 21-7 for the season. Yeah. I've got him but at 20.5 for the game. So if you go and look, since the start of, well, since he came to the Pels last year, without um, Cousins or Rondo or Peyton on the floor, he's got like, and with Davis on, he's got like a 16.5% usage rate. Okay. And then this year, like we're seeing it trend back toward that direction. Davis plays so many minutes that you don't get a ton of, of Miritich without him. Granted, he does play like all the minutes that Davis doesn't play, so you can bump it a little bit. Um, and and that's kind of why I think coming in between like 18 and 19 makes sense. Okay. Is this a fantastic spot for Julius Randle, just in like a mental perspective, ignoring price and all that? Yeah. I mean, every minute he's on the floor, he should be posting insane numbers against this team. Yeah. It, everything that he does fits this matchup perfectly for him. Yeah. I like I have him projected on DraftKings. He's sixty seven hundred. I have him projected as a slightly positive value in twenty six minutes. I have him at twenty eight right now. Um but the ability to just blow up here, I think, is is really relevant. Eleven percent expected ownership on DK. He's seventy three hundred on FanDuel. Um scroll down to him here. Like if you want to go to someone in the mid tier at 4% expected ownership on FanDuel, I like him as a sort of sleeper GPP center option. There's real upside in this matchup. Yeah. And so talking ownership projections, you said Miritich was projected really highly on DraftKings and Randall's much lower. Yeah. I have, if I, if I project Miritich for 32 minutes and I project Randall for 26 I get a 1.1 DraftKings point difference between Miritich and Randall. They also oh. negatively correlate with each other. Mine's 1.4. Okay, yeah, so same. But th they also negatively correlate with each other, yep. which means that if Randall, if, if something negative happens with Miritich, like he gets in foul trouble or something like that, Randall would be the one to soak up a few more of those minutes. And it just makes it the perfect like leverage play in tournaments where you're pivoting to the lower owned guy who has a phenomenal ceiling as well and who would benefit if the chalk guy gets in foul trouble or something weird happens. I feel like this is one of those spots where we see Julius Randle and Alex's 100K winning lineup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Etal Moore, any, any of the rest of the scrubs on the Pels? Yeah, you can play anyone from the Pels. Um, Etal Moore, I don't love the price tag, but should still play big minutes here. You know, played. Do you only play twenty thirty one hundred. Darius Miller tickling your fancy? No, I don't think so. He did get thirty minutes, but that was. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Neither does um, he. But uh, yeah, no, I mean more. I think still you have to project him for like mid thirties in minutes, even though he didn't play the fourth quarter against Boston. Uh, really good matchup for him. Obviously, don't prefer him to all these other really high upside guys, but he's still fine. Like this is just a game where if you can get pieces of new Orleans to fit in your lineup, then just do it. Let's talk about pieces of Washington. John wall, 9,300 on FanDuel, 9,100 on DK kind of chalky on FanDuel. But that price is appealing. Uh, I love the spot for wall that it's a, it's a nice matchup for both teams on both sides. Um, what do you want to do with wall? Only 12% expected ownership on DraftKings. I don't plan. I, I doubt that I get there on DraftKings. I just can't get myself to allocate ninety one hundred dollars to John Wall when there's guys at other positions that I like so much that are expensive. Yeah, uh, it just seems like outside of you know fully game stacking this game, it just seems like getting Wall in there is going to put me in some positions that I don't want to be in. I, I think that's totally reasonable. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu, let's hop back here. Bradley Beal, 8,200 on FanDuel, 8K on DK. Again, I like Bradley Beal a lot on FanDuel at that price. Yeah, I like him on DraftKings too. Um, 
you and I were talking about it before the show. There was a quote from Scott Brooks after the Rockets game where Bradley Beal played 50 minutes in overtime. Um, prior to that, he had played like 45 minutes and 44 minutes or something in back-to-back games. He has just been playing the entire second half. And Scott Brooks was asked about it. He said that he is play- he has been playing Bradley Beal too many minutes, but that during the Wizards' timeouts, he makes sure Bradley Beal sits on the bench the entire time to rest. Um, I don't know if we should be taking that quote to mean that maybe we see a game where Beal, a game soon where Beal, you know, plays a lot less minutes, like we saw with John Wall for a game or two, or if Bradley Beal sitting on the bench for a minute is all the time he needs. So, um, <laughs> just we need to get him of, a more comfortable chair, right? <laughs> just kind of something to keep in mind. I mean, the guy's playing 44 minutes a night right now. I think that projecting him for like 40 is probably not crazy. And it's obviously a really, really, really appealing matchup. Also, because of the rotation that he's running, he's getting a bunch of time with the second unit, um, especially in that second half when he's playing every single minute. So <laughs> he's out there without Wall a lot, or you know, as much as, as he can be. Even in the first half against Houston, he got like five minutes without, four minutes without John Wall in the first half. Um, so that boosts his production a little bit as well. Uh, just, just really, really like Beal here. Okay. Otto Porter, 6,600 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Uh, he's got less ownership on FanDuel than DraftKings right now. Um, he's a guy that I'll be looking at as well. He's okay. I just I don't like that his price tag's coming up. I Same. still think that he should be projected for like 32 minutes. Yeah. I have him for 33 right now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I just have trouble ever getting him above 32. Like, ceiling-wise, he can. You know, last game, obviously, he played 37, but that was overtime. The game before that, I think he played 36. But there's just so many wings on this team that if you map it out position by position and come up with a reasonable minutes projection for everyone, it just gets really difficult to really get Porter above that like 32 to 33 minute range. Agreed. Here's a DK play. Can't do it on FanDuel, in my opinion. $6,500 on FanDuel for Markeith Morris, 5,100 on DK, only 4% ownership. I. I would want to pay. I would have no problem paying fifty one hundred for Marquise Morris on DraftKings today. No, I completely agree. I mean, he was like twenty percent owned last slate, but he was forty four hundred dollars. Yeah. The role he's in right now is just the absolute perfect role for Marquise Morris. Like every, if you were to like go back and watch every single show where I've recommended Marquise Morris over the last two two years, probably it's always been. I think this is a game where he gets time with the second unit, and I think this is a game where he plays center. Yep, and that's literally his role now. Um, playing, he, he's got the Montrez Harrell role. He plays 30 minutes a night at center, coming off the bench, and that suits him perfectly. He, in that role since last season, he has about a 20% usage rate. He obviously sees a boost in rebounding as well. He averages close to a fantasy point per minute. This is a really appealing game, you know, pace wise and, and defense wise. So, you know, yeah, I think he's still a good play. I think that it's clearly not as good a play as when he was 4,400, sure. but you know, still, still a very, very quality option here. Like I would rather play Keith than Porter on DraftKings. It might even be a better play at 5,100 than it was at 4,400 if his ownership really is 4%. Right, exactly. Like when I liked him at 4,400, but at 20% ownership, it was like, okay, it's still Keith. There were a lot of options that slate. Like I, I was okay not having him. Yeah. at that ownership but assuming that that comes back down you know I, I still think it's a good spot for him Ubre or jeff green in in large field tournaments where you're multi-entering yes absolutely like yeah it's it's you can't feel comfortable with these guys but at the same time there's going to be a lot of points in this game there is still volatility in this washington front court rotation even though we haven't seen it recently um Ubre has been picking up fouls like a crazy person so his minutes have been down but I think that he's still probably in games he's playing well and not fouling. You can get 28 minutes from Kelly Oubre, not the most productive minutes since he's in the starting lineup now, but still 28 minutes in a very, very appealing game. If Oubre is not playing well or is in foul trouble, or Keefe is not playing well or is in foul trouble, you can get Jeff Green approaching you know 26 minutes at $4,000 in a game where they're going to need his scoring anyway. So it's just super high upside, super volatile guys at the forward positions from Washington that I would want to kind of be overweight on all of them, not together. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page. Pricing isn't as fantastic on some of these guys. 
Jeff Green is only 4,200. I like that. But 4,700 for Kelly Oubre, I could take it or leave it. If I were playing 150 lineups, I would make sure to have some, but there's no volume there for me. It's Wall, Beal, and Porter where I want to go the most, at least on FanDuel. Yeah, so on, on DraftKings, the guys that project as, like if I put in you know their rates and everything, the guys that actually project as good plays for me are Beal is the best and then Morris and Wall. But it's just a spot where I would want to make sure in my tournament crunches, if I'm playing a bunch of lineups, that I over project some game flow situations where like Green hits his ceiling and Ubre hits his ceiling. There we go. Moving on. Yep. Oklahoma City and Cleveland. This one shouldn't be uh, too much. I got no Oklahoma City on my first crunch on FanDuel, so this should be fantastic. 11 1, ah, actually, 114.5 implied total for Oklahoma City. 101.5 for Cleveland. Uh, worst by a mile on this slate. Russ is 11 1 on FanDuel, 10 9 on DK. Uh, I didn't get any Russ on my first crunch, and he is like the number one guy in my projection system. Um, I wouldn't mind having him. I don't love this game because I don't see any way Cleveland sticks around with this Oklahoma City defense. What do you want to do with Russ? Or I, Paul George or Steven Adams, I guess. Yeah, none of them really grayed out that well for me. I mean, Russ obviously does, but when you compare Russ to the other expensive guys, he doesn't. So, yeah, slow, like slow-paced like slow game. Um, not a good Cleveland defense, but they have, like the one thing they've actually been good at this year is defending like pick-and-roll point guards. Um, and I think that's schematic. So, yeah, it, it's obviously not that I'm saying, you know, it's a bad matchup for Westbrook, but yeah. when you compare him to all these other guys, it's just one more thing to kind of not like. Yep. I didn't get any George, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. I didn't get any Steven Adams. I didn't get any Dennis Schroeder, who is a little chalky, 6,400 and 6K. Do you want to go to him no. based on his chalk? No. Um, I just still don't buy into him when he's playing a bunch of minutes alongside Westbrook. It just doesn't make sense for him to be all that productive. Only guy that's popping up, and he is pretty chalky on DK. I won't have him on FanDuel, but 4,300 for Jeremy Grant. Yep. I think it needs to be paid attention to. Yep, I was going to bring him up. Um, not a guy that I love rostering ever, but the minutes can't really be ignored, and he is productive enough. Like He's not a high usage guy, but he just does everything when he's out there. Um, so, yeah, he's fine. Okay. Uh, to Cleveland we go. This one's, oddly enough, the more appealing spot from a fantasy perspective, which kind of scares me. Larry Nance is 6K on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, and he's the chalk player of the day, projected for 41% ownership on DraftKings, 50% on FanDuel. And I totally get it. Um, if we don't have... If Larry Nance is starting at the four, he's going to get 30-something minutes. Um, I have no aversion to playing that much Larry Nance, although outside of the fact that it's terrifying. He also played... So Tristan Thompson played 40 minutes against Minnesota. Larry Nance played four of the eight minutes at center that Thompson was not on the floor as well. So, and this is a spot here with Nerlens Noel as the backup that that absolutely can happen again. So, yeah, I think that that's just even more reason to like Larry Nance here. Yeah. Uh, Tristan Thompson, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I don't have a problem with it because he's going to be out there for almost every minute that Steven Adams plays. Um, but this is not really a great matchup for Tristan Thompson. Yeah, really difficult matchup, but the guy's just been absolutely phenomenal lately. The minutes are through the roof. It's a really deep position. I'm not going to say I'm prioritizing Chris, Tristan Thompson, but if I get him, I get him. I'm not. I, I'm not like redoing lineups because I have Tristan Thompson in them. Exactly. Uh, Rodney Hood continues to be a guy that pops up for me. Fifty-two hundred on FanDuel, forty-six hundred on DraftKings. Have you been playing any Rodney Hood? Nope, and I'm not starting today. Um, <laughs> so one thing to point out last game when he was 30% owned and, of course, had his best game in weeks was that Jordan Clarkson played 22 minutes. If you're projecting Jordan Clarkson regularly to play 22 minutes, I think you're going to be very wrong very frequently. Um, so I'm, I'm going 26 right, back. right now. Yeah, I'm going right back to 26, 27 for Clarkson and like 30 to 32 for Hood. So that makes it even less appealing for me. Okay. Anybody else from uh, the Cleveland side? No. Um, so George Hill is still questionable, right? 
Uh, about to find out. Could return Wednesday. Went through some full contact four on four work on Monday's practice. Could be a game time call. Yeah, uh, if he's playing, I mean, just don't play Colin. Don't play anybody other than Larry Nance. Right. Um. But yeah. So I mean, if he's out. I still don't have a ton of interest in Sexton. It's just, it matters. Um, also looking at their rotation from last game, Chetty only played 30 minutes. Chetty didn't close. Rodney Hood and Kyle Korver closed. So that's just another way where Hood's minutes could drop. Um, but yeah, no, outside of Nance and to a lesser extent Thompson, I have nothing from this team. All righty. Two games left. We're already at an hour and five of the non-live recording. <laughs> 11.15. Portland and Orlando, 112.25 implied total for Portland. Orlando, 105.25. So seven point favorites for Portland. Take a look at the Blazers side here. Not getting a lot on FanDuel. Dame, 9,500 on FanDuel, 9K on DK. I'm fine with it. He's not a priority. Uh, the one guy that I would be looking at the most would be a DraftKings play, and that would be Yusuf Nurkic, 6,800 on DraftKings. What do you think? I always like Nurkic. And his price tag never moves, and he's never rostered, and it's great. It's a game where, like, it's not going to go small. He's going to be out there with Vucevic, who has been better defensively this year. But still, like, Nurkic is just such a productive guy whenever he's on the floor that this is another center that I'm really going to like. And one thing that I think to really like about him on DraftKings, thinking about the context of the slate as a whole, is he's the exact same price as Ennis Cantor, which – mean and i assume Cantor is going to be much much more popular and they have like identical ceilings yeah this is a, i mean vooch is just not that guy on the defensive end if vooch played defense as well he, he played offense he'd be the best player in the league um nurkic should have a this is a really great spot for him i wish that he was as cheap on DraftKings as he is on like or i wish he was as cheap on fanduel as he is on dk 7800 is a little bit more difficult, but I'd be fine having him in a GPP. What happened with... There was something weird that happened against the Clippers. Like, he didn't play at all in the second half, but I think he was hurt or something. I don't know. Portland. Nurkic. Bruised right shoulder. Probably play on Wednesday. Okay, yeah. So, he played 15 first half minutes. Don't take anything away from the fact he played 15 total minutes. Yeah. CJ McCollum for 6800 on FanDuel, $400 cheaper than he is on DK, is always just sort of there for me. Otherwise, I'm good on Portland. Yep, I agree with you. Orlando, 9500 on FanDuel for Vooch, 8300 on DraftKings. I mean, if Vooch keeps playing like this, 8300 is a bargain. Yeah, um, the only problem for me is just the way at least on DraftKings, the way that center pricing breaks down, when you have Cantor and Nurkic for 6,800, it makes it really tough. And you have, you know, Embiid for 11 too. It just makes it really tough to get to this like mid range, especially like Towns is, you know, 9,400 as well. Um, and Vooch, the, the one issue with him is that more times than not, you're going to get like 32 to 34 minutes, which is fine. But when you're comparing him to guys like Towns that plays 38 or Embiid that's going to play 36, it makes it a little bit less appealing. Um, so, yeah, like I don't have a problem with Vooch, but I can almost guarantee he's not getting into any of my like top lineups. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Although if I were playing on DK, I would have a lot more. 9500 not happening for me on FanDuel. He's $400 cheaper than Carl Anthony Towns. I don't have yeah. anything else in Orlando. Um, I don't either. I mean, John, what did Jonathan Simmons end up playing last game? 3,200 on draft yeah. things. He played 28 minutes. He also lost four minutes to foul trouble. So, yeah, I guess Simmons kind of has to be like a good value player. But he does not do favors for the usage of other guys in that starting group either. Like Wes Wondu being out there bumps usage for guys like Evan Fournier. Gordon, like Vooch, um, Simmons tends to shoot a little bit more than the one do. Want to close this out? Yep. 
Clippers and Suns. Clippers 120.5 implied total. Suns 108.5. Uh, it's a good spot for Phoenix here from a pace perspective. Um, 12 point underdogs, though. Not great. We'll start with Montrez Harrell, where he's $8,300 on FanDuel, $7,200 on DK. I'm cool with it for 7200 on DK. I'm going to have a tough time getting the $8,300 Montrose Harrell. I'm going to have a tough time getting to him regardless. And it's not that I dislike his price point on DraftKings. It's that Julius Randle is the same thing for 6700 in a better spot, like pace-wise. Um, so, yeah, like if I'm going that route of just hoping I get super productive minutes from a guy that's not going to play a, a ton of minutes in the mid-range, it's just going to be Randle for me. Do you want any Lou Will, 5,700? Avery Bradley is an interesting punt, 3,700 on FanDuel. Getting a lot of minutes. I don't know what to make of this Clippers team right here. It's a great spot. Everybody loves playing Phoenix, but I don't like the prices. Yeah, the prices just really aren't that appealing. Lou Williams is the only other guy that on DraftKings is grading out as like a positive play for me, uh, him and, and Harrell. Yeah. But I just doubt that I prioritize either of them. Makes sense to me. Go to Phoenix Point Book, I would imagine. 8,800 on both sites. Uh, not really getting any ownership. I'd rather go to Point Book on FanDuel than I would on DraftKings for that price point. Yeah, um, he's been a better FanDuel play for a while now, and I guess that's not really changing. Um, no issue with Book. It's just, again, that with all the options on this slate, I don't know that I want to you know allocate that much money to Devin Booker here. Um, but... Obviously love it. I mean, like I, I love him playing point guard since last season, still in you know, like a 33, 34% usage rate, 40% assist percentage as the point guard. Um, but even if I put all that in, like I get him projecting for 47, 48 DraftKings points if he plays 38 minutes of point guard. But for one, all of his minutes are not as the point guard. Like he still plays alongside Cannon for some minutes. And for two, that still probably doesn't get him into a ton of my lineups at that price. There's one guy on the Suns that's going to be in a ton of my lineups. It's TJ Warren. 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. It's a great price for TJ Warren on FanDuel. Yeah, right back to 38 minutes yesterday. Um, he had gotten ejected the game before. He was in foul trouble the game before that. But right back to the 38 minutes we've been seeing from him pretty consistently. I like the price tag as well. Um, he's He's grading out as a good but not great play for me right now. Okay. Yeah, he's he's grading out. I got he hit my cap on my first crunch on FanDuel. So he's a guy that I'm definitely looking at. I like Aiton too. Not not like love, like prioritize, but I just think it's a really it's a spot against the Clippers that I've looked to take good centers against all season long. And I think this is a spot that he should do well. There you go. Wanna talk Thrive? Yeah. So, as we mentioned in the uh, Broken Up podcast in the first portion, we have a sponsored Thrive contest today. Um, if you go to thrivefantasy.com, you'll see a $2 Awesome challenge. Um, if you sign up using the link bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Thrive Strat. Uh, I don't want to whiff on that. Yeah, Thrive Strat bit.ly slash thrivestrat sign up there you can get ten dollar bonus for a ten dollar deposit a twenty dollar bonus for a hundred dollar deposit a fifty dollar bonus for a two hundred dollar deposit and if you enter this tournament and you send an email to thrive or dm them on twitter you'll get that two dollars back you could enter this for not a dime consider it a free roll for you all you have to do is reach out to thrive uh, after or before you enter after you enter i guess um, so this is a versus contest. Uh, so we're trying to pick a player. Um, we're, we're picking these guys based on props. You get a certain amount of points uh, depending on how the game shakes out. So I'm going to move this window over here. I'm going to move this window over here. We're going to hop to my Thrive tab. We're going to take a look at a couple props. So the first one up on the list, Kemba Walker versus Joel Embiid. Kemba Walker gets an extra half point to break ties. Um, you get 95 points if Kemba Walker scores more points than Embiid. You get 105 if Embiid scores more than Kemba Walker. 
I'm entering my information on the screen now, but I will throw it to you first. Who scores more points today, Kemba Walker or Joel Embiid? I have Joel Embiid projected for four more real points, and he's getting more points than Kemba, so I'll take Embiid. There you go. I have Kemba Walker projected for 1.1 points more than Joel Embiid today, and I get the hook. I would have preferred to get the extra points, but give me Kemba here. So, Josh. Okay, that's well, yeah, I, I missed the uh, the plus half a point. Yeah. Doesn't change it for me, but no. that's cool. That, so you have the, the points bonus and the, the line. Yeah. So cool. give me Kemba. You'll take Joel Embiid. We'll go to the next one. I'll find another one that I think would be fun to talk about. Okay. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge versus Carl Anthony Towns. Points plus rebounds. The action is the same. 100 points on both sides. Aldridge gets plus 2.5 to points plus rebounds. What say you? Dude, I suck at math. Um, I built a little thing for it, so I don't have to do it. <laughs> All right, so I have Towns at 27 points and 15 rebounds. So that's what, 42? Yes. So I'm at 42.6. And I have... Where the hell is Aldridge? I need to find Aldridge. All right, so 42.6 for Towns. And for Aldridge, I have... Twenty-two points and eleven eleven point eight, so that's thirty-three point eight. So I think I have to go towns. Yeah, I have towns points and rebounds thirty-five point six. I have Aldridge at only twenty-seven point eight. Um, so I would definitely want Carl Towns here. I'll I'll give uh, Aldridge that extra two and a half. So we're on the same page. We'll stick to uh, we'll stick to your team. The John Wall points, rebounds, and assists gets a four and a half point boost, and he gets 110 points if you get it right. So points, rebounds, and assists for Wall or Anthony Davis. All right, so I have. <laughs> I should probably just open a calculator. Um, I have Davis at 33 and a half points, 14.8 rebounds, and five and a half assists. That's I have 54. Wall. All right. I 50, have 53.8. 50, so 53.8 for Davis? Yep. And I have Wall at 22. So 23 points, four and a half rebounds, nine assists. It would be 36.5. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go uh, Anthony Davis. Yeah. I have Anthony Davis at 45 and a half total points, rebounds, assists. John Wall at 36.9. Um, Wow, really? That's not a lot of assists for AD. Not important. Uh, either way, it's AD for me pretty clearly. Um, the 110 points for Wall is interesting. It's probably a lot closer than it seems because you're getting a four and a half point boost right. to Wall. So that's right away, it's like a 45 to 41 thing. But I don't think you're getting enough uh, fantasy points back to go to Wall. So I'm going to take Anthony Davis. We'll do two more here. Looking for a fun one. Okay, uh, here's another fun one. Jimmy Butler versus Ben Simmons. Total rebounds. You get two and a half additional rebounds, or two and a half, plus two and a half for Jimmy Butler, and you get 115 points for Jimmy Butler. The line is plus two and a half for Butler. Who has more rebounds? I'm taking Butler. Uh, I have Jimmy Butler at five and a half boards, Ben Simmons at nine and a half. Um, so that would get Jimmy Butler to eight. I'm going to go Ben Simmons. I have, I'm double checking what I put into this now, but I have Butler projected for 0.3 rebounds more than Ben Simmons. Oh, wow. But I think I have a rate wrong. Oh, wait, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but I, I still think it's going to be close enough for me that I would go Butler. Okay. I'll have to figure out what my actual rates are, but yeah. One more here, then we're going to get out of here. Oh, God, I can't do that one. Do you have anybody that you would want to look at? 
off the top of your head any player that you can think of uh no great thanks for the help <laughs> okay here we go this one's kind of crazy too uh i don't even know how to justify this one paul george versus james harden points plus assists you get 11 and a half but it's plus 11 and a half for paul george and and you get more points yeah he's 105 are you oh, are you looking at this right now yeah okay that helps me then i don't have to explain it any further You'll, you're seeing the same thing yep so if i give 11 and a half additional points to paul george for points and assists he gets to 37.8 which is still three points and assists shy of james harden um so i'm gonna go james harden so i get for harden points plus assists i have 48.3 for Paul George, so I would need him to be in what the mid thirties. Yeah, that's actually pretty reasonable. He can get that in just like actual points. Good. I haven't projected for yeah twenty seven, so that would put him at like thirty eight. Yeah, I guess I have to go James Harden. There you go. Five picks there, everybody. You can play against us in that contest, but you're playing for second place because I'm taking this one down. Go to thrivefantasy.com if you want to join us. Um, you can get into this contest, $2 buy-in. If you contact Thrive, they will give you that $2 back. Or you can sign up bit.ly slash Thrive Strat. Um, and you can join us playing on Thrive. They are our presenting sponsor now. Uh, NBA Strategy is the promo code for this show. If you want to sign up at awesomeo.com, use that code. Get a seven-day free trial on any package that you would be interested in checking out. Uh, later today, we will have uh, the deep dive coming from Lafay in the early afternoon. Deeper dive starting eh, somewhere in the 4.45 to 5 o'clock range, breaking down this slate with Adam and Lafay. And then live before lock tonight, uh, Chris Baggs and Eddie Fear taking you all the way up to 7 o'clock. Adam, anything else? No, that covers it. There we go. Sorry for the technical issues. We got the second one in in an hour and 20 minutes. Not too shabby. It's already 11.30. Where'd the day go? Best of luck, everybody. We'll talk to you later.